Welcome to the Recycle Podcast, where we discuss everyday issues from a mental health perspective. We are your hosts, Dr. LaFanya Jones, Dr. Rashonda Strickland, and Dr. Nichelle Wall. Now don't get it twisted. We're not going to be your stereotypical therapist. What we will be is down to earth, informative, a little spicy, and vulnerable. All right, interns, turn up the volume, grab your pen and paper. It's supervision time. As a reminder, this podcast is not meant to take the place of a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. Welcome back to session 33, Dressed in Blue. Okay, interns, this session is going to be about high functioning depression. Now, don't get it twisted. This is not a diagnostic category in the DSM, but it was necessary to bring this information to you guys because the individuals suffering from this type of depression appear to be stable or fine. Functional. (laughs) Functional. Thank you. I could not think of another word. (laughs) And they seem functional because they go to work, they're able to accomplish tasks, they have relationships, they even socialize. Mm -hmm. And so they seem functional. Do you guys have clients that you believe may, if this was uh, an actual diagnosis, are dealing with that versus the major? I do. We were speaking about this topic uh, before we started recording. And I was telling them, I just think it's mild depression. And Mm -hmm. that's basically, so I do have a few um, clients that are diagnosed with mild depression because, you know, they're able to function, but internally they're having a difficult time. Gotcha. I agree with that. Do you guys think that therapists and not speaking to us three specifically, but therapists as a whole, or mental health professionals as a whole, do you think we are more inclined to suffer from high functioning depression? Mm. I feel like as therapists, we're more inclined to suffer with a lot of things if we're not paying attention. Yeah. Cause I definitely think we suffer from anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I can, I can see the depression too. So let me kind of give you mm-hmm. my, my internal backstory. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm asking that because I've had clients ask me before, um, not if I suffer from depression, but they've asked, you know, a few of like, how are you doing? Like, and they genuinely really want to know, like, mm-hmm. how are you doing? And then, you know, of course you always give them, Oh, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. But, you know, uh, I've had a few people kind of say, well, I know that, you know, you guys hear all of this stuff all mm-hmm. the time and, you know, you know, you just kind of help us. And then, you know, we'd come in and basically, I don't want to say dump because it's not what I mean, but like we bring all of our issues to you and for you to kind of help us work through. And that's a lot for you to do kind of like throughout an entire day, week on weeks on end, you know, um, doesn't that get to you after a while? Now, of course they're, they didn't say it as long winded as I just did, but that was the big gist of what they ask. Um, and it got me to thinking like, I wonder do therapists, are we more inclined to kind of, you know how they say like those that can't do teach, mm-hmm. you know, are we the, the mechanic that has the busted up car or the hairstylist with the, mm-hmm. you know, jacked the men, <laughs> yeah, the jacked up hair, you know, are we the ones that help other people work through their issues? And, um, but then we don't focus on our own. I would say that that's true. If you don't have a support system, if you don't have an outlet, self-awareness, yeah. Self-awareness, you know, I I would say for the three of us, and I know you said outside of us, but I, I would say for the three of us, because we have each other as outlets, I feel like we are able to process with each other, Mm -hmm. whether it's a processing that we need to do for sessions Mm -hmm. or a processing we need to do with something in our personal lives. Yeah. And we typically, if, if need be, we typically give each other feedback, Mm -hmm. you know, 
Yeah. I don't really think it personally here. I don't think that's something that we struggle with. I think when stuff pops up, stuff pops up, we feel it, we deal with it, that sort of thing. But I can definitely, I know therapists personally who are like that. Mm. But it's also because they don't take good care of themselves. And then I'm like, uh, you need to go sit down for somebody snatch your license. Mm-hmm. Because you're not supposed to be practicing that way. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. It was just a thought. No, I, I think that's a good question. Because, you know, honestly, I've never. I, now, I've asked myself if I'm anxious. But I I tend to look over depression. And I don't know. It's probably because of what you said. Like, it, I don't have time to be depressed. I got to go mm-hmm. and do what I need to do. Yeah. Um, and then I, it pro- it may also depend on the population that you, that you see as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know? Yeah. Interesting. It was just a thought. Just wondering since we're talking about high functioning depression. Yeah. But I also think it looks different too. Mm. You know, and we've talked about this before, you know, you need to make sure that this is for all my mental health professionals. You need to make sure that if you are in this field, that you are taking diversity classes. Because these disorders do not look the same across the board. True. Um, depending on what your culture is. And we've talked about this in the past. A lot of black people have a tendency to be very angry. And that's one of the, the signs that you can tell, you know, there's some depression or something like that going on. And that's just not what you normally see in other cultures. And even the differentiation between adults and children. Mm-hmm. Children don't always look sad either no Mm -hmm. you know they may act out they may have anger outbursts um they may get in trouble in school a lot Mm -hmm. you know so you also have to know the difference between those two as well Mm -hmm. and shout out small shout out not a big one to apa american psychiatric association for finally beginning the steps to erase uh systemic racism in um psychiatry and psychology because if our systems are flawed that help people you already know everything else is going to succumb to that so Mm -hmm. i can appreciate them taking a stand uh we we want to see what y'all gonna do but we i can appreciate that out there Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. apologizing for that Yeah. yeah okay well so i'll the two biggest symptoms of depression that we depression just in general is when you feel sad and hopeless that mm-hmm. those are two symptoms that we can definitely that we start definitely listening for um de- diagnosing for depression mm-hmm. and we'll give you more symptoms as we go along but those are two big ones that we listen for yeah it's funny because i had a a male client this week and he specifically asked me um what is depression he, um, because he has a a lady friend that I guess she has been trying to communicate to him that she's depressed, but he's very mm, short and abrasive. Mm-hmm. So he may not necessarily be receptive to hearing what she mm-hmm. has to say. Mm-hmm. So he was asking me, like, can you tell me what depression is? Because uh, he has other issues, but... So that was one of the things that we were talking about was, you know, for her, it's not going to necessarily look like I can't get out of the bed or, you know, I'm not showering or not eating. And so for some people, of course, it's going to look that way. Um, But for the type of woman that you're dealing with, it's probably not going to look like that because his thing was, well, um, she had just recently gone on a trip. What that mean? Mm-hmm. Sad people don't vacation, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> um, so that, but that was kind of the thought process. Mm-hmm. Well, like you know, you you're going on this trip, and you know, you seem happy, and it's like, well, yeah, it, you know, a lot of people, as we talked about, fake it to make it in the last session. A, a lot of people do that. You know, they can throw on a smile and and fake for a few hours for a couple of days, but all of the mm-hmm. same stuff internally is still happening. But yeah. I know how to look good for a certain amount of time that's what i was gonna say they 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 become accustomed to giving people what they want Mm -hmm. if they need some closed doors Mm -hmm. man Mm -hmm. what i said but behind those closed doors Mm -hmm. all of that is off oh yeah oh yeah 
That's when that's when you can see it behind the closed doors. They have the symptoms of the sadness, the hopelessness, the um, crying, the isolation, the even suicidal thoughts, maybe even attempt, Mm -hmm. you know, the Mm -hmm. appetite increase or decrease, the lack of motivation, the lack of energy. You know, those are all symptoms of lower libido. Got to add that in there. mm -hmm, There you go. (laughs) So can we kind of walk through what hopelessness looks like? Like, you know, behaviorally, mm-hmm. because sometimes, you know, we can say a term, but it's hard to visualize. Well, what does that really look like? You know, I can say someone's hopeless, but like, OK, the base of that is without hope. But what when you're dealing with a person, what am I looking at? So I would say if we're dealing with cartoon characters, a great representation of that. Now, he he a little severe would be Eeyore Mm -hmm. oh yeah um that is hopelessness personified right there Mm -hmm. um just inability to to speak without being monotone like these are the extremes of course um but also another example that would be the is it is it inside out is that the movie? Because mm-hmm. y'all know I forget the name of this movie every time I want to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> inside. But out. the sad one is on there because the sad that actually probably is closer to functional uh, depression, even though the the features looked sad, but they were still doing their job, still operating the sad emotions and all of that. Mm-hmm. But I think you just kind of you start losing track of things, like you're not fully connected to the world that's one of the top things that I always notice when people when they're battling like hopelessness Mm -hmm. they're checked out yeah I was gonna say the last one uh, that you said they always look like they're in a daze or you Mm -hmm. know kind of daydreaming a fog or a haze (laughs) (laughs) a fog or a haze (laughs) she's emphasizing that because that's one of the topic titles we were trying to throw out (laughs) Um, and then I would uh, add to what Dr. Wall said. I, I definitely agree with that. But I also would add to those are also the people who they sound more pessimistic. That's what I was thinking. Cynical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Of course, these are not specific, you know, but in the same vein of uh, it's always going to be this way. It's never going to get better. Yeah. You know, why mm-hmm. should I do anything different? Mm-hmm. Why do I need yeah. to bathe? Mm-hmm. <laughs> why do I need to comb my hair yeah you what know, is the it point doesn't matter it yeah <laughs> what's, oh, what's the point of it yeah mm-hmm. yeah I was gonna say it doesn't matter anyway I have tons of songs running through my head right now <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm all about the education and it's like 101 because that's such a broad term you mm-hmm. know it seems so self-explanatory but for some it really isn't you know for individuals that don't have emotional language Mm -hmm. and haven't learned all of the thousands of different feeling words that exist when you think about hopelessness uh, yeah the word we know what it means if I look it up in Webster but when you need to identify that and pick out a behavior can you so that's I was wanting to kind of elaborate on that a little bit Mm -hmm. you know high functioning people they have a dip a difficult time getting through the day internally it's exhausting for them actually Mm -hmm. if you're not careful you can confuse a high functioning person with an introvert I can see where you're going Mm -hmm. with that that kind of on the outside it appears isolative Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah or withdrawn yeah Mm -hmm. I can see that the same way that um, introverts get confused with shy Mm -hmm. I am not shy (laughs) (laughs) at all yeah (laughs) or standoffish or stuck up all words that have described me at some Mm -hmm. point yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so i can definitely see how you could confuse an introvert with somebody that's got you know a higher Mm -hmm. um slightly mild depression Mm -hmm. and from what i'm told they feel like they're constantly faking it Mm -hmm. they give like the version of themselves that people expect to see Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm Cause then I can go home and take all of this, these masks off Mm -hmm. and then just retreat. That's Mm -hmm. the word I'm looking for. Retreat. (laughs) I was thinking recluse and I was like, no, Uh, I I mean, that is a word. Yes. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I can retreat back to my safety Mm -hmm. and comfort zone. Yeah. Because they've been proven all day to people that they're okay. 
or at least trying to fake that they're okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, something that's interesting. um, I was talking about this with some friends recently, but I remember when I was selecting like colleges to go to, I intentionally was like, I don't want to go to any Ivy league schools because I don't want to be more depressed Mm. because the amount of expectations that are put on uh, people that go to Ivy League schools, like I'm not even going to name them because I ain't trying to get in trouble. But the depression is really high. Like there are certain locations that even have like their bridges like boarded up or with um, nets underneath them because the attempted suicide rate is so high. Oh, wow. So like scary Mm -hmm. expectation tends to go hand in hand when you have that high functioning depression. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Because no, like you said with your client and how, what you're just describing, people don't believe that you're suffering with it Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. on the outside you're functioning Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you don't want to be seen as weak, Mm -hmm. whatever that means. So if I had to guess, I would think that would lead a lot of men to high functioning depression that not wanting to appear weak. I can see that. Mm-hmm. Um, just based off what American society places on masculinity. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, around the world, masculinity looks very different. But for the U.S., it's a very machismo kind of lumberjack. Very stoic. Mm-hmm. Mm. Cavemanish. Right. <laughs> and that if you, you're allowed to, you know, kind of communicate a certain number of feelings regardless of whether you feel all of the different versions that they that exist but what people are comfortable with observing of you Mm -hmm. you know is a very limited scope so you know over time if this individual is not allowed to you know be vulnerable yeah because i was like there's a whole bunch of different feelings (laughs) (laughs) uh vulnerable if they're not allowed to be um disappointed or um hurt know, hurt yeah mm-hmm. yeah that that can become internalized frustration which then you know we know unmet feelings turn into a whole bunch of other stuff yeah, yeah. there's this huge falsehood about being strong oh, and i just had to talk to oh, one of my clients about that today yeah like your strength doesn't lie in the amount of times you can stop the salt water from coming out of your eyes like that's not strength Mm-hmm. That's actually repression. Mm. So mm-hmm. that's not something that you should be actively doing because you need to be able to healthily express your emotions. And that doesn't mean it has to be tears. It could be talking to somebody. It could be playing basketball. It could be whatever your thing is, but it does need to come out so that it can be properly processed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I try to get my clients to not use that strong in their vocabulary to mm-hmm. describe themselves or anyone else. I try to have them to replace it with resilience. Mm -hmm. When you imply that someone is strong, you you're saying that you aren't able to express yourself. Like I expect for you to hold it together all the time. It don't matter the situation. Mm -hmm. And that's unrealistic. Well, that goes along with intent. You know, people they're intending it oftentimes to be a compliment, Mm -hmm. but you know, we forget that just because something sounds nice doesn't mean it is nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And just because something sounds helpful doesn't mean that it is. Yeah. I remember I did a speaking engagement um, to a group of black women. And that was one of the things that I was talking to them about. You know, if you want people to stop seeing you and describing you as a strong black woman, then stop acting like you don't have feelings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <sighs> So this would be a throwback to trope tripping one. <laughs> yeah. And two. And two, because we can't forget our men folk. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Yeah, you got to break that down, though. You you do have to, like, be cognizant of the facade you wear when you, when you follow that. I'm like, I don't, I want to be weak. <laughs> <laughs> I want to okay be with, human. I know, yeah. that's what I was thinking. I want to be real. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I want to be multifaceted I want to be if I need to be strong in a moment then I want to be able to be that in that moment if I'm vulnerable or weak or hurt or 
alone or lonely or whatever. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to be those in the moment. If I'm joyous, you know, I want to be able to have all versions be presentable and accepted. And you decide what it looks like for you. Yes. Prime example, when you go to a funeral and somebody's like, you're just, you're so strong. You're doing so well. I don't know how you do it. That's, I said, that's not being strong. Right. Like I'm just, I, maybe I don't have no tears to cry right now. Or maybe Maybe I'm I'm just, yeah, Mm -hmm. maybe I'm just in the moment right now, just taking it in and just being with my family right now and just allowing people to just love on me and comfort Mm -hmm. me and support me and that's okay. Yeah. That don't mean I'm, just because you're sad, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be crying every second of the hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are certain tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's A-N-C-H-O-R period F-M. Okay, so what are some other high functioning depression traits? So let's see. They feel like a capable, productive person because of them being able to complete tasks. But in that those attempts to be normal, when they have bad days, those bad days are unbearable. Do you ladies believe that individuals that suffer from high functioning depression are easily set back Mm, I would say no actually why because they're so used to going forward I feel like people who are typically the high functioning depression depression people are the ones that push push through and Mm -hmm. like prime example um Robin Williams Mm -hmm. Mm. you don't know nothing is wrong until they're not here no more Mm mm-hmm mm-hmm so okay. I think they are able, they feel everything. I'm not saying that they don't feel everything, but they are the people that you never knew anything was wrong. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. I believe they have setbacks, but we would never know it just oh, from mm-hmm. your example. You yeah. know, they tend to uh, have negative self-talk. Gotcha. And if something happens, like, you know, uh, they get a reprimand or something at work, that's a setback for them internally. That's mm-hmm. that negative self-talk validating, you know, mm-hmm. statements that they, they're hearing in their head. Mm-hmm. But like I said, the external, we would never see it. Gotcha. So my original statement was going to be yes. Um, but now hearing what you ladies have said, I do agree um, that individuals that are you know, are on the higher end of hey, it's not such a weird thing to say They have higher, um, higher functioning depression. I do think that they internalize a lot and then self deprecate and mm-hmm. just kind of have a whole bunch of negative self talk, but they bury it so that they can mm-hmm. keep going. You know, yeah. it's kind of like, okay, just shake it off. Okay. Just shake it off and keep going. You know, and don't really address it. It, not saying that she was just out here doing great, but it reminds me of uh, MMB last month when we did Fat Girls mm-hmm. and Jasmine. Mm-hmm. Because n- nobody would have just assumed that she was depressed the way she was. Because right. she, like we talked about, she was on the verge. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> she was on the verge of having to go stay somewhere. So, like that representation of that. Yeah. You know, it's right there. It's like she's still functioning. She's still the funny best friend. She's still probably doing everything that she's supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that makes me think about, man, I wish I could find this particular um, activity, but it was like types of dysfunctions in family. Mm -hmm. But specific to what you're talking about is they were talking about the jokester. Mm 
and how people use humor to cover up Mm -hmm. pain. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've read that somewhere before. I can't remember where though. Yeah. I wish I could find a source. I mean, for any of our researchers out there, please put it in the comments. We would definitely love some extra info, but that character in specifically, I can definitely see her using her personality to cover up what was really going on internally using jokes and humor to be able to distract from you looking at me any deeper because if you look Mm -hmm. at me too deeply then you'll see all of the things that I'm afraid of or the things that I don't like yeah or my sadness that too that's why it's important for you to have at least one person and when I say one person I mean someone that you can take those masks off in front of because if you don't have those people around you or a person around you that you can do that with that makes you feel like you have to keep this facade because mm-hmm. nobody exhausting. it is me to have to be on all the time I don't want to do that Mm-mm. I want to be able to fall apart and know that you still got me yeah that's important recovery is easier <laughs> that way <laughs> <laughs> yes now I did want to say this Um, It's important that we let our interns know that what we are discussing is different than major depressive disorder. That's not what we are necessarily talking about. This, it would be someone that may not actually meet criteria um, and not to be confused with persistent, uh, what is it called? Persistent depressive disorder, Mm -hmm. which used to be called dysthymia. So we're just talking about your basic level depression. Low grade yeah well well to even piggyback off of the this dysthymia people in dysthymia can function too yeah Mm -hmm. they they are hot for real for real Mm -hmm. high functioning depression and typically isn't it like two years Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you've been like this for at minimum two years yeah but that like i said this is so that would probably criteria criteria that's what i was gonna say that may be the diagnosis that you would get diagnosed if it meets the criteria of the two years Mm -hmm. otherwise it would be mild depression yeah yeah thank you for making that distinction no Mm. problem Mm -hmm. something that i do talk with my clients about sometimes is like just because you're experiencing a symptom that has a diagnosis name doesn't mean that it's always diagnosis worthy oh yeah yeah i have to talk to them talk to my friend my, not my friends my clients <laughs> I was like, hold up now, yeah, no, not my talk friend. now. exactly <laughs> my clients all the time about the difference between sadness and depression mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because I think we've said in sessions before that um, all emotions are healthy but we make them unhealthy because of the uh, intensity that we experience them mm-hmm. so so example of that would be um, sadness is healthy and depression is the unhealthy right. mm-hmm. and even happiness. We, you know, we don't like using the happy, but we'll use it right now. Happiness is healthy, but manic is unhealthy. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can even have despair and that's still healthy. But mm-hmm. once you cross over until you've been in that emotion too long, it turns into some other things and it's, it's just yeah. not good for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. I would say another way to, um, help some or be there for someone in that position is one be a listening ear and don't feel like you have to I'm gonna make up a word that we've all heard don't feel like you have to therapize them (laughs) (laughs) a lot of times when people are experiencing this sadness they don't want you to one talk them out of being sad Mm -mm. yeah You know, they just need to express the negative thoughts that they're having because they think that these thoughts are true. Right. They think that they're not worthy. They think that they're not good at their job. In that moment, they don't want you to talk them out of it. Yeah. I usually tell people to go in and I, I'm going to admit, I saw this online, (laughs) uh, but it was really poignant. And I started using it in session was to when someone is coming to you and they kind of want to talk and address us something, whether it's with you or about themselves is to start off with one of three questions. Is this something you need me to listen to? Is this something you need me to get involved in? Or is this something you need me to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. 
So, you know, that gives you as the support person, um, you know, the understanding of what they actually need from you in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you also have to remember with this type of person that they probably don't want you fixing stuff for them anyway. They feel perfectly capable. And if you step in, it's going to exacerbate, make worse what they're already feeling. Mm -hmm. So you need to give them the space or or like we like to say, hold space for someone to be able to be vulnerable and not feel shame from doing that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would say if you're also going to be that person for somebody else, you need to be able to handle emotion. Mm -hmm. You know, if you already yourself have a difficulty with emotional expression um, yourself or, you know, observing emotional expression for another person, then you might want to check. Are you the safest and healthiest option for this person to be able to come to? Yeah. And then don't make it about you. That part. Oh, my (laughs) gosh. Y'all, I had a whole flashback. (laughs) I'm sorry. I had a friend do me like that one time. I was sharing some very uh, sensitive information about myself. And they comment was, well, why didn't you tell me? This is not about you. Mm -hmm. Mm. You know? So I'm glad you brought that example up. What does that mean to you? Like not making it about you. I think literally it is you being there to stand in the gap whatever as long as it's healthy (laughs) you are being a sounding board a listening ear you're not interjecting your stuff into it it's not like oh I remember this one time when I felt no 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 you that's another way that you make it about yourself it is literally just you being a source of support if they feel like all they want to do is break down and cry then just hold them and let them break down and cry or hold a tissue box maybe they don't want to be touched Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people get that wrong because we're so consumed with what my part is supposed to be when you're you're not reading the room like Mm -hmm. tune into the person that you're supposed to be there to support they are showing you or telling you exactly what they need Mm -hmm. yeah I would agree with that um that's kind of where my mind was going like Mm -hmm. don't don't try to one-up their experience Mm -hmm. and say you know that well you know well my such and such was like this, Mm -hmm. you know, and try to make like, well, my pain, what in the world you sad for? Mm -hmm. Look at all the things that I've been through. Mm -hmm. Like what in the world? You ain't got no reason to be sad. So definitely not trying to one up that person's pain or whatever experience they're going through. And like Dr. Wall said, not reading the room. So sometimes it is okay for you to provide commonality Mm -hmm. and so that the person understands that you are not the only person that goes through this. So I can, while I can't understand your experience from your point of view, because I can't live your life for you, but I've had similarities. So if I had um, a situation like that, you're going through because I've had that similar piece, this is what I did to get through it. So Mm -hmm. I do think that there's a time and a place to be able to give your story, but you also have to be aware of, is that person interested in having your story in that moment? Mm -hmm. Um, Or is it necessary, even if they want it, is it necessary for you to do it in that moment? And I I definitely think if you miss the preface of what, Dr. Strickland was saying earlier of asking, you know, what do you need from me in this moment? Do you need to vent? Do you need some advice? You know, if you don't preface the conversation with that, then it's definitely okay to say, can I give you some feedback? You know, do you want to hear my experience? You know, it's okay for you to say that and Mm -hmm. let them answer. And even if they want, even if you want to touch them, can I hug you? Exactly. Like ask permission Mm -hmm. for what you were trying to offer. And if they shut it down, let them shut it down. Yeah. It's, it don't have to be about you. <laughs> and don't take it, don't take it personal. Yes. If they shut it down. It's like a Dr. whole Mar- song about it. Yeah. <laughs> Monica sang it. Mm-hmm. So true though. But we do. And that's the hard part. Because kind of how I think you were just saying earlier, Dr. Wall, what we've been taught about showing up for another person, you mm-hmm. know, and how we communicate and be supportive we've always been shown that 
you do hug the person, you do interject, you do yeah. interrupt, you do, you know, well, let me tell you what happened with me. And this is how I, <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. no, shut up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think many of us think we play a greater role in people's lives than we actually do. Mm. At the, Ooh, at the that end. just hit somebody <laughs> in the stomach real hard. Ooh, girl, you just gave somebody some real easy nuggets. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, you're important to them, but you are, like I've said before, you are not the lead character in their story. They are. Mm-hmm. And hey, if man. you keep derailing them, you're going to have some problems. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I, tsh, girl, we can push in right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, man, I do believe that that's a whole session in and of itself, Mm -hmm. like having the understanding that what role do you actually play in other people's life? And then vice versa, how much do they play a role in yours? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you overvalue the role that people play in your life. That part. Yes. Thinking people. Let me come back. Yeah. So we can talk about (laughs) Y'all let us know. Y'all let us know if that's something y'all want to talk about. Yeah, because I think that'd be a good topic. But y'all got to let us know. Emphasis on. Let, Let us, us know. know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So then how about, you know, the person that's actually experiencing the, you know, high functioning depression or mild depression, if you will, what would you say to the person that's experiencing it? First, get some therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Go sit on somebody's couch, please. A licensed thank you. professional mental health provider. Okay. Mm-hmm. Someone who is unbiased, someone who can have your back hold you accountable without getting anything from it. Mm-hmm. Please and thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ashe. <laughs> yes. I totally agree. You know, if I had to add something on, because there are some people out there that are just not going to go to therapy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if we're going to be honest, honest, Mm -hmm. they're just not going to do it. So then I say visit your local self-help section, you know, in any bookstore and at least start there. Or go to Audible if you don't like to read. Yes. Because you see how you having all these excuses for the things that we trying to tell you to do. Mm -hmm. Stop that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) you hear that we talking to you (laughs) while they are not therapy they are therapeutic Mm -hmm. which there is a difference which we slightly went through a couple of sessions ago um so these are therapeutic tools that if you are just 100 percent anti-therapy you can at least get some very basic um skill building Mm -hmm. uh accomplished through different workbooks audiobooks just regular books Um, to be able to help you kind of at least start working your way through. Yeah. So because we're not utilizing this podcast to um, provide therapy, I won't be very specific, but it's not just enough for you to start thinking positive. That's not going to serve its purpose. You have to figure out where these negative self-talk conversations are coming from. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And the thing is, you have these voices in your head, you have these conversations in your head, and you have to figure out where it's coming from, whose voice are you hearing? And now it's probably turned into your voice, but whose voice did it start off being? Yeah, I think that's very essential. You know, we've talked many times before that our families are our first associations. You know, I'm a huge advocate of your brain makes connections and it makes associations because it wants to take the easy route. It does not want to do the long complicated thing, which is why you can't hear your own heartbeat. You can't, you know what I'm saying? Like it wants to cut out as much noise as possible. Mm -hmm. So the quicker it can make an association, it will. And sometimes those are unhealthy ones. Mm -hmm. And that can be things that your family communicated about you, that you're too short you're too fat you're too um skinny you're you're, too dark too light yeah nappy hair long hair straight hair silky hair curly hair. right oh (laughs) you you think you better than us you too good you're too dumb i mean all of these things so your brain wants to take the shortcut and it's like oh okay well then let's just go ahead and start believing that then because it's self-fulfilling prophecy yes (laughs) way to bring that back Uh uh-huh uh because it just doesn't want to do the work to combat those ideas combat combat those thoughts uh because that is that takes a lot of self-determination a lot of um 
kind of internal processing and that is difficult it help you have to learn how to identify mm -hmm. truth versus uh false yeah and what's you typically the reality have to have some type of breakthrough to be able to do that anyway you know kind of the the story and we may need to do this uh movie it's on our list is uh antoine fisher mm -hmm. like he didn't oh, yeah. he didn't know he was great mm -hmm. he didn't yeah. know he had greatness until somebody you know proved it to him mm -hmm. you know so i do think that's something that you have to kind of keep in mind but with you utilizing um going and researching things as far as like going to the bookstore looking up a book on audible or or whatever that can give you extra information extra knowledge so that you can start to make that breakthrough um i would say the thing that i would tell people to do and this is something that is important is you know build your tribe Mm -hmm. because they can be your accountability because you're not always going to be able to be accountable to yourself and they will know you well enough to be like, Hey, what's going on with you? Mm -hmm. you you're out here acting a fool. Yeah. What you doing? Like a prime, prime example is my mom. Um, she has, she's able to look at my Amazon uh, account. <laughs> not that I'm out here buying nothing, but I will read too much because that's mm -hmm. my, um, coping skill that's my self-care or whatever and she'll look up i done read 14 books in three days mm. i done checked out mm -hmm. somebody come get her mm -hmm. mm. i'm not dancing like a stripper but that's not the point <laughs> um but you you have to have your squad your team and you know also know what their roles are in your life don't go to your person that's your hype man when you need to cry because that's right. not gonna that's not gonna go over well mm-hmm they're going to be trying to get you out of that <laughs> wanting to cry. Mm -hmm. And you need, maybe you need to cry in that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, it's so funny that we, you talk about that. And I don't know if this needs to be a separate session or a piece of a different one. But one of the things I was talking about a, with a client yesterday was that um, everybody has a different combination to you. Mm -hmm. you know not everybody has the same code okay so. meat and potatoes okay <laughs> <laughs> nuggets um <laughs> that so in this particular client you know her goal was to be able to emote equally to everybody mm -hmm. and I was like why right. <laughs> do you want to do that and she was like well why and I supposed to and I was like no no. Not everybody <laughs> has the same combination to you. Right. Everyone's everybody code is different. Access. Right. Yeah, I said, now, would you go tell your brunch friends the same <laughs> thing that you would tell <laughs> your best friend? And she was like, no. I said, well, exactly. That's the point. Not everyone has the same type of access. So if I go in as the brunch friend and I'm trying to hit the best friend code and then I put my <laughs> biometric on there, it's going to stay denied. Mm -hmm. yeah. It because should. Or it should. Mm -hmm. I said, because I don't have that at, that security clearance to you. No. So you have to be aware of, again, this goes back to what we were saying a little bit earlier. Be aware of what role people play in your life yep. and keep them in that role accordingly. This is not to say that the brunt friend can't jump over and become a best friend yeah. eventually. Mm -hmm. But for the moment being until that transitions happens, you got to keep people where they belong in their respective mm -hmm. circles. Mm -hmm. okay circles of trust y'all remember <laughs> that from the boundaries that's important though because yeah. people need to be movable in your life and if they get a problem with it then you probably need to take them off your list all together yeah because they weren't there for you they were there for them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was, that's good yeah man we threw some nuggets out in this last little hail mary <laughs> <laughs> or the three-point buzzer so yeah in order to get these nuggets, hopefully you listened all the way to the end. Yeah. Make sure you water them. Okay. Mm-hmm. And make sure you like, share, and comment. <laughs> <laughs> and subscribe. Yes. And follow. Oh, you said share. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All them things. <laughs> Come on, we're trying to grow out here in these streets, guys. And we're trying to have some dialogue with y'all. So go yes. on, comment. Tell us, give give us your thoughts on this one. Yes, yes, yes. Now we are growing because we got some new countries out there. We see y'all. We see y'all. Shout Thank out to you. Serbia. <laughs> Shout out to Serbia. Okay. <laughs> um, so like we always do, we want to leave you guys with a quote. It does not have an author. So if it does, you know, put that in the comment section too, you know. <laughs> And it reads, all it takes is a beautiful fake smile to hide an injured soul, and they will never notice how broken you really are. Must be this
fire control. So, okay, interns, process your notes. Be sure to catch us next session and find us on all major platforms at The Recycled Podcast. If you're a new intern, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for listening. And remember, we are shifting and reshaping our psyche through healing conversations and connections, one discussion at a time.